You might have seen question, question 17 before. 17 is actually not a difficult question, but a lot of students struggled with that question that year. Um, 17A is 6 cm. 17B is 7 out of 18. I think when we printed it, for some reason, it's given there. It doesn't matter. Now, let's look at 17A first. The total area of part P and part Q is 10. What is the length of each side of the square? So you need to find, obviously, the total area. Then you square root it. That will give you the area of the square. Area of the square, square root, you get the length. Now, they tell you that area P is one nine of the square. They tell you that area Q is one six of the square. This is kind of a repeated identity question. Where is your repeated identity? Your repeated identity is the square. So you look at the two denominators. You look at the two denominators, you make them the same. So 1 out of 9 is the same as 2 out of 18. And 1 out of 6 is the same as 3 out of 18. Okay, so this is your P and this is your Q. In, our, in other words, P plus Q is how many units? So your area of P plus Q is two units plus three units to give you five units. And that gives you five U is an area of 10 cm squared. And if you look at the denominator, what is the total number of units? So your 18 units. Okay, I should find one unit first. So that gives you one unit is 10 divided by five to give you two. Okay, and your square is just 18 units. So, 2 times 18 to give you 36. But please be very careful. That's not the answer. They ask you to find the length. This is your area. And therefore, to find length, you are supposed to square root. And that's how you get 6. Okay, common mistake for this question is that students go and find the area, then very happy, then they write the area as the answer. Forgetting that the question asks you for the length and not the area. And so obviously in the exam setting, they expect you to know the idea of a square root. The next part, they ask you what fraction of the square is part S. And this is where you have to understand the logic of your area of triangles. From the diagram, you have to be able to see your area Q plus area R is equal to half of your square. Okay, when you have a triangle where the base covers the entire length of the rectangle or the square, and the height covers the breadth or vice versa, the length, in this case, the base covers the breadth while the height covers the length. It will always give you half of the area of the square or the rectangle. So your Q plus R is always going to be equal to half. And because your Q plus R is equal to half, 
that would mean that your P plus S is also equal to half. Okay. And once you know that P plus S must be equal to half, you have P. P is 2 out of 18. Half is obviously 9 out of 18. And therefore, that allows you to find Q. Uh, sorry, find S. So S will be 9 out of 18 minus 2 out of 18 to give you 7 out of 18. And that's the answer already. Okay, you basically take half of the square minus away P. And that's how you get S. You already found the fraction of P in part A. Okay. So it's actually not a very difficult question, but I think a lot of students struggle with it. You just need to make sure you remember that when you get a triangle within inscribed within a square or rectangle, if it covers the entire length and the breadth, it will always be equal to half. All right. So fairly easy question, but 